everybody, I'm Mel, and this is my channel Splat and Chat, and I am so excited. Can you tell? Because I am going to teach you how to paint. So I've been painting with adults and children in my area for a while, and I thought it'd be so much fun to bring my painting and my skill to you guys, to a lot of people. So I'm excited about this getting started um, chance that I have to share this with you. So I have all kinds of fun things to paint and fun ideas and great, I mean, fun. That's all I can say. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you're interested in learning how to paint or just being entertained, because I can do that, click the like, just the like, subscribe buttons down below, the honk, the horn, cherry on top buttons, whatever they are. I'm not sure yet. I'm going I'm to learn all this stuff. <clears throat> anyway, and um, come back. I'm going to try to get a video on every single week for you guys, and it'll be lots of fun. So today... We are going to paint one of my most favorite things. And as you can tell, I'm having a little bit of a spooky voice because I love it. It's Halloween and Halloween is coming. It's like about a month and a half away. So I figure you need to start painting these paintings to get your muck in your house and get your house decorated. So anyway, we're gonna paint a fun moonscape scene today with some haunted trees in it and just to get us excited about Halloween. It's really kind of stormy and cloudy outside, so it's a perfect day for this. So let me tell you what you need and we'll get started. <laughs> okay, you guys, I always start out with the same supplies. You always need paper towel folded up like this. You always need a water cup for painting. And I feel it very minimal, like uh, maybe about an inch down there. This is just an old frosting container that works great. Paper plate always works great for paints. And I always use an old one. So I'm always just using, this is all dry. I'll just pour paint right on top of it again. So that works good. And then you want to have your paint brushes. I kind of always do three different sizes. Here I've got two of the same size, but so I'll put this one down. A big brush, a medium brush, flat brush like this, and then a this tiny little brush. And they all kind of have a sharp edge on them. Okay, so there's the three sets I usually use. Sometimes you'll throw in another one. These are the three. And then you'll want your paints, obviously, for, for your painting. Today's painting, we're going to use this beautiful five colors. Only five colors today. woo So you'll need a white, a purple, a blue, a gray, and a black for this fun Halloween sky. Okay, I've loaded my palette with purple, blue, white, and black. Okay, those are the first colors you're going to need. Get this really big brush first, your big fatty guy. Dip it in some water, always first. Dry it, pat it out just a little bit on your paper towel, and we're ready to go. Wow, that's black. <laughs> Maybe I need to rinse that just a little bit more, just a second, okay. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, so, wow, that's still really dark. <laughs> that's okay, lad, to our haunted, haunted sky. So take a little bit of your purple first. We're gonna create this cool, um, put some water in there. I'm gonna create this purple hue circle in the sky. Okay, just make a good sized circle here in the sky with your purple color. Add a little bit of water because that really helps it to blow and do some cool stuff, okay? So here we go, I'm just using a normal canvas here and it's kind of an eight by 10 canvas, I think. So that's what I'm doing today, purple on. Next is blue. So just leave your purple right in your paintbrush. We're starting into our blue and drag that up in there right around the purple okay add some water to oh just kidding my power went out oh my goodness that's even spookier oh did you hear the thunder oh, oh that's exciting it makes for a spooky painting doesn't it <laughs> just kidding okay <laughs> power went out oh can you hear the thunder going today this is a perfect day for a hunt picture i love that i love that okay so anyway get the blue around my lights are flickering a little bit even wow what cool effects i didn't even try that that's awesome okay i'm gonna kind of bleed some purple in between the two layers so i'm just pretty much taking my paintbrush as it is adding a little bit more purple to it and just taking it right between the two layers of blue and purple and just kind of smearing those together okay to make this really cool smear and you want these really cool paintbrush strokes in there okay those are really kind of cool in there from there i'm gonna take a little bit of black on my palette i'm gonna add a little bit of black to the corners now black goes a long long way you don't want too much because then it will be really really dark and awful so 
I mean, depending on how dark you want it, you can make it dark, dark, dark if you want to, but I'm just doing a little bit of black around the corners, just right in the edges, smearing that into my blue. And make sure that as you're going, you're painting the tops of your, the painting the tops and the sides of your canvas because that will finish it off. When it's all done, you won't really need to have a frame on it. When you set it up somewhere, it'll kind of just wrap around and frame it for you. It's beautiful. So here is my cool, unique sky so far. I love that, love that. Okay, so just get it to where you're loving the way it's looking. Kind of haunted-y, spooky. Rinse your brush really, really good on that last after the black. And you'll want to put in some white into your paintbrush, okay? White right into the same big paintbrush we've been using. And now you're gonna smear some white smidges just right in. I'm taking kind of on an edge of my brush, not the flat end, but the edge of my brush. I'm just kind of rubbing some white in places in there just to give it that haze of the moon. Okay, that's gonna kind of kind of go into your the edges of your painting. And you don't need a bunch. Just tell you like it and you'll think it looks like it's got enough glare on it. And there, and see these chunky pieces? I love those. So, put a lot of those in there. Anyways, there you go. We'll just get it till we think we like the way it looks. Chunky whites and all kinds of fun stuff. Let that dry a little bit, and then we're going to come back and put the moon on, okay? Do I look scary? I'm trying to get a scary pose. I don't know why. <laughs> but entertainment purposes. <laughs> Things we do when our paint is drying, right? Let's return to our painting, shall we? my painting. Oh, I was drying it. <laughs> a little bit drier. I'm gonna take my big paintbrush, dip it in some gray now. Okay, some of this darker gray color. And I'm gonna create a, a little bit of a swoopy, um, what is this called at the bottom? A little landscape here, a little hill. So I'm just gonna make this little, you know, a little bumpy hill that kind of comes over. It's picking up some of my blue and that's okay. Make this grayish heel that kind of comes. I'm setting it up out of my easels here for a second, kind of hanging on to it so I can get a hold of it. And I'm making a little kind of bit of a um, piece of land part down here, a heel. Make sure you're wrapping it around the sides. Okay, there we go. If it picks up some of the blue underneath, it's okay, it's cool. Okay, that's my heel that I'm gonna work with underneath the bottom there. Okay, now I'm gonna put this beautiful so rinse out your brush really really good we're gonna put in some white into our brush so we're gonna want that gray out there they're pretty good take that big brush again get it loaded with some white and if you pick up a little extra color that's okay because you know how your colors are all mixed together on your palette like it's like mine and we're gonna kind of finish off this moon area in between here this little circle that you left with some really sharp edges okay so we're gonna put Make some of those sharper edges on that moon. Now, if your moon's not perfect, look, I just picked up black, see? If your moon is not perfectly round, that is totally cool because you guys all know the moon has craters in it and it's bumpy and it's no big deal to have bumps on your moon. Actually, my husband, he's kind of a little nerd, which I love. He went and got himself a telescope this last little bit and it's a pretty cool telescope. I was, he set it all up and he got it all going and he was able to show me the moon in it. And it was so cool because you could see all the little teeny tiny craters on this moon, on the moon, like we have more than one. Anyway, <laughs> it was really cool and it was bumpy on the edges and it was, you could see all the little holes in the moon and I was just intrigued, it was really cool. And then not only did we see the moon, he like uh, set it up to be able to see like Jupiter we saw Jupiter and I think it had like two moons or three moons. I don't remember, but it was really, really cool. And then he even tr um, got it to go on to Saturn. Was it Saturn? And I saw rings. I mean, it was teeny, like it was, you had to really look, but you could officially see rings in around the planet, which was so cool. I mean, you've seen that in pictures, but you don't ever really like see it in like real time life. It was cool. Anyway, so anyway, the whole point of that moon has craters, right? Add a little bit of blue in your uh, moon there, and then just kind of put it in spots to kind of make it look like bumpy and cratery. Just kind of, I'm just taking my paintbrush and putting just much going like that. 
onto the canvas, okay? So I'll get some of those craters in there. If you did too much, let it dry and come back over and add some white onto it. Easy to fix, okay? Bumpy crate, and to know it, the more texture your painting has, the better. I mean, like, pile all the paint on, Arr, you don't know? Anyway, okay, that's enough with the moon, enough with the moon, it's beautiful, it looks good. I'm gonna show you how to do some really cool and fun haunted trees. Now, the thing I love about trees in Halloween paintings is that they're very easy to create because they can be bumpy and rickety and awful and ugly looking and they look Halloween-ish, which is perfect for us. So good practicing for tree starting with trees is to paint some Halloween paintings with trees. I'm going to show you real fast how you make a tree. I'm going to come down here, my flat, this is my middle brush. I finally switched brushes, middle brush, put some black on it. Come down here at the bottom. I start a little bit lower than my the top of my ground because I don't want my ground, I don't want my tree setting up weird. I'm going to kind of ground it. And I'm going to put a little bit of a stem here. I'm make it thick there at the bottom. It's going to come up and it's going to be rickety and bumpety. And as I'm coming up with my paintbrush, I was painting flat like this using my whole paintbrush. As I come up, I'm going to kind of turn my paintbrush and that will make me have these nice thin branches as it comes up. See how I'm turning that? Can you see that? Am I in the way? Okay, I kind of turn it as I go up. Okay, and it makes me have these really cool branches. The trick about doing a tree is that you start thick at the bottom. It's always thick at the bottom. And as it goes up and out, it gets thinner and thinner. So thin, thick, okay? If you get a spot in your tree that's a little too thick, or a little spot that looks funny to you, it's probably because you've got a thick spot in your tree. For instance, let me show you. This is gonna, I'm gonna make that thick. Thick branch, right? It looks a little bit wonky. The way to fix that is to just make sure that it comes down wider and always gets wider as it comes down. In your beginning trees, you're gonna have a little bit more issues and it's probably gonna look a little bit bigger, wider, chunkier trees in your beginning trees. I think you'll get really, really awesome and you'll be able to do these really skinny, elegant, delicate trees and they'll be beautiful. So anyways, practice with those. Making these really cool, funky trees, right? And you can make them wispy and windy and whatever you wanna do on those. Let's get a couple more branches that kind of blow over in here into this spot. Yeah, anything you wanna do, this is so much fun. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to make kind of a, this is just a single tree. We're gonna kind of do a forest over on this spot so you kind of get an idea of if you wanna make it a little bit more thick of a forest or just a couple trees. But if you're making a forest effect, you wanna get gray on your paintbrush, you're gonna paint the same trees but back here on the start on the horizon line. And then you just make trees in a lighter color. Okay, so a color that kind of matches your background a little bit better. That makes it look like they're off in the distance and there's a lot of them. Same idea, you start big at the bottom, come up thin at the top. So those are working. Always gets thicker and thinner, or yeah, thicker as it comes down, thinner as it goes up, right? Let's do a couple more back here in the background, another couple trees. And if you're missing parts of the trees, it's okay because like light hitting them different ways, in interesting ways. Okay, so there is a couple more trees. The more it matches your background, see I picked up some blue, that's okay because it looks more forested and thick. Let's do another tree back in here, another one in here, another one right in, even in there. See how thick I've gotten that? It's a little bit more forested now, okay. And then picked up some white, which is cool. That can make me some little grasses and stuff. Anyway, kind of settle those a little bit in the ground there. And then we're gonna make a tree right in front of it. And you'll see how cool that looks. It's more forested. Same exact way we did this tree. Get some black on there. Start a little bit lower. Come up. As we're going, we get rickety bumpy. Ooh, I love that crank. Don't you love that? That's fun. And then we kind of come up, I'm in the way. I keep putting my hand in the way and I hate doing that. I hate when I do that. Anyway, I twist and turn my branches. My brush will go up and get out of the way. Or my hand needs to get out of the way. <laughs> the branches get smaller as they go up is what I'm trying to say here. Anyways, so yeah, just drag those ones up there any way you want to. Look at those cool trees. And you can see that this side looks a little bit more forested and thick and full and this one just looks like a single tree. So depending on what you want to do, you know, make a little tree. It's a little bit more of a thick forest over here. The Halloween trees are the best. They're so much fun. You can mess up on them and they still work and look cool. 
There's some of my Halloween trees. And on the bottom of them, I just kind of take them and spread them out just a little bit and settle them in the dirt here. So they look like they're planted a little bit into this dirt. Okay, if you want to give them a shadow, just kind of think about what the way the moon's shining. The moon's shining on this one this way and the moon's shining there. So you just kind of give it a little bit of a broken up shadows in the direction that the moon is shining. And there's some fun shadows, okay? Here's our beautiful trees. If you want to take your little tiny paintbrush at this point, give your tree some texture, which is a little bit of gray. Get your paintbrush wet always first. Get your paintbrush a little bit wet. Add some lines of texture and bark in there. The side closest to the moon, the side closest to the light source. Just broken up little lines and we'll kind of give it some more um, texture and fun effects. Some of it might have already picked up a lot of paints from underneath of it, which gives it some fun effects too, so. Anyway, there is some cool lines and stuff and texture in the forest. So that is a pretty cool moon, I think. You can add a few little leaves straggling hanging on if you want to. Hang on for the last little bit and fall. I would just take this little smaller size of a flat brush. Can you see that? Get it dipped in black and just kind of put a little leaf here and there. Just That's just like taking your brush and just... Those are the last leaves of fall hanging on here. Is that my little sound effects? You just go... Okay, like that. Little leaves hanging on for dear life. The last little bit of, of summer. Okay. Put as many as you want. And that could be your painting. It's beautiful. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple more things to add if you want to, if you're interested. Uh, for example, a headstone in front would be really fun. Let's do something like that. Let's do a, like a gumdrop shape for a headstone down here. Okay, do that kind of gumdrop shape there. Drag it down a little bit. And then you're going to want to do the same shadow thing that you did before with your paintbrush. Give it a little bit of a grounded shadow in it. Okay, and then I kind of like to do a little bit of gray on the side of it. So I take a little bit of gray right at the top, like this, drag it down, and it makes it look like it's got some dimension to it, okay? It's got some, like, 3D effect to it. And then you can go ahead and take your small paintbrush and write some fun little message on there. I don't know, dead guy here, I don't know. There's so many fun little things that people have written, but I'll just write R. Actually, let's do it. I can't even get the gray on my paintbrush. R I P, rest in peace, right? Can you see that? And or you can do like a pumpkin, little pumpkin patch down in there. Like there's so many fun things you can do. Is that a pumpkin? I'm just taking that small paintbrush again, put black on it, start here, and drag it like a C shape with small sections, like a moon shape. Same thing on this side. Oh, there's some more thunder. Then you come right down the middle and right down that middle, and you got this really cool pumpkin shape. Give yourself a little stem. Okay. I mean, how cool is that? Little tiny pumpkins. You can do a whole bunch of those in there as well. Let me show you a bat real fast. Bats are so much fun too. Little tiny paintbrush. Here's our bat flying off in the sky. Just do a little loop. And a little loop and a little head. Okay, just like that. Give your little guy some points at the bottom. Like this. A little tail and little ears and voila. You have a cute little bat there, bat there too. You can do several bats. I mean, so many fun things to do with this, but I wanted to kind of focus on these fun crickety trees. So this is a fun one to get started with. And yeah, I think we're pretty much done with this one. So finished. Um, great painting today. It turned out really fun, really simple, and um, perfect decoration for Halloween. You can get, you can see this. If you want to visit my Etsy shop, you will see this with more details in it. It'll have like a haunted hill and a haunted house in it and some really cool things to add to it. So check that out in my Etsy shop. It's the link of it's below. You can just see it and add some fun things to your painting or you can even print out a, get the digital download and print it for your home and hang in your home. So anyway, check that out. Thank you for painting with me today. If you had fun, come back again and we'll paint some more Halloween for a little bit. And then of course, after Halloween, We'll paint all kinds of fun things. So join me again and we'll see ya. Mwah!